together as brothers and sisters, we are to be able to treat one another with the highest of respect. You know, I mean, we, my greeting to you Amen. should be with, with dignity. It yeah. should be, uh, you know, if a lady, I, I learned this in school, and it's an improper thing a lot of times maybe for a man to offer his hand to a lady. The lady should be the one to offer his hand to the man. Of course, we kind of uh, override that because of who we are as Christian folks. There's no, no wrong with us. Uh, shaking hands one with another, but you know, there's proper ways to do everything. Yeah. You know, and, and from handshake to manners, you know, a church house outside of the eight men's or uh, and all like that should be a place of silence. Yeah. When, when someone's trying to, to preach and talk, or they, you shouldn't get out of your seat unless it's an emergency. We accept it as an emergency. There should be nothing said unless it's an amen, blessing, this yeah. way and that. You know, oh, your neighbor, no conversation. You know, if we're not careful, we're reprobate. Yep. We deviate Amen. from what's more than right, yep. from what is exactly mm -hmm. proper, from what God has made to be exactly what He wants it to be. Yep. I guarantee you, when Jesus got up and talked, He went back here trading pocket knives and honey and, and talked about uh, something under the sun or whatever else they could think about. They just paying attention to what He had to say. Yep. Yeah, but, but so I want you to understand, examine yourself. Don't worry about so and so down the road that you think is preaching something they shouldn't preach and. And if they just had you in the pulpit, how straight the church would be, how holy it would be, how they'd be a walking, examine yourself. Yeah. You know, figure out what it is, each of us, as we walk this life. What, as I come into 2012, what in my life causes me not to think that Christ could come in the next four or five months, six months, tomorrow, the next day? What, what has caused you to deviate? What has caused you to not be as morally correct as, as you possibly can be? And, and Paul went on and said, But I trust that ye shall know that we are not reprobates. What he's saying is, this congregation, Paul said, I'm a man of God. And I trust that you understand I'm not deviating. Yeah. I'm not up here beating there. I'm not suggesting to you uh, some old wise fable. I'm not telling you to a necktie or a pop or a chun gum or, or some type of your shoe showing your toe or your shirt down over your knuckles or something like that. I'm not telling you that it's in there. I'm not deviating from that. You know, I, I'm not erred. You know, how, what does God look at as actually being an error or a deviation or someone concerning the faith being reprobate, someone mis un just in an immoral manner or in an unrighteous way representing what we're calling to be God? You know, with this is one of the most uh, important things that you'll ever do in your life is to, to stand up here, open this book of eternity, and read these scriptures and tell someone this is what God expects of you. This, this is what he expects. And, and But Paul, he wanted him to know. He said, now, now I want you to understand. And he's going to go into a little more depth here. Now I pray to God that ye do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest. Now what he's meaning is that is, he, he wants you to do right because it's a life unto you. He, he don't want you to do it because, just because Paul's saying so. Although Paul is saying the truth, I'm telling you the truth. I want, but I want you not to deviate because it's a life in you. I want you to get all your, in your heart, in your prayer life, and in your mind that in your life there could be something that you've grabbed a hold of, that you've established, that you've settled, that you're holding on to, that you're not letting go of, some place that you're going, however it might be, so the group around you has done it, uh, the preachers has not preached against it. But now it's come down to the time that you examine yourself. You yeah. know, how can we escape Amen. if we neglect the greater salvation? Yeah. You know, the Lord's given us the ever opportunity to read and hear and pray and to have a heart that we want something more out of this than we've ever had in our life. And you can't make God do nothing. All you can do is live in a way that He will humbly hear what you're saying. And he can't hear somebody that's strung up on yeah. a lot of wise things. You Amen. Know, how yep. can you get God uh, to move for you when you think that you've got to go home and cut down your, your favorite spruce that's in the yard? <laughs> or, or there's the little dog that you've had running in the house now for five years. It's the best pet that you've ever got. You want God to move. You think you're going to go home. Well, we'll kill the little dog. That's no more than this, some of this other stuff, folks. Yeah. People are done. It's idolatry. Yeah. You're serving God in a carnal form. form to get him to do something, and we've talked that, let that go, unleash that in our, in our churches, and, and we've excused it to be acceptable. 
by saying just if that's what you believe, just go on. I mean, yeah. We just join hands with anything and everything, but the Lord's bringing me into that. He's going to bring us to a place where where He is going to be God, where His Word's going to be His Word, and if you proceed to Him, all this foolish and unlearned stuff's going to be put away, and you'll not hear that mention where God is ordained, where He's anointed, and where He has called His people to a purpose. You won't hear that. That stuff will cease to be. Now, now Paul said, Now I pray to God that you do no evil. Don't, don't do evil. But not, not that I would be approved of it. Not because you can go out here and say, Brother David told me this. <laughs> Brother David said that. Oh, he, Brother David, Brother David. Paul didn't want his name in it. And whenever we become a person that anything we do, that we want recognition or a name of it, then I and myself have deviated. I'm not morally right. I'm not properly in the conduct that God's called me to do. But we need to examine ourselves. See, if we're not careful, you know, it's very easy for to be reprobate. You know, we think, yep. well, that's just some type of someone that fell off the deep end, don't believe in nothing, that's an irate idiot for God. Ran, yep. You know, just rambling crazy around through the world. <laughs> that is anybody that has deviated. Amen. in the least. You know, the yep. prince said 39 and 7 16. Yep. 39 and 5 eighths won't work. Amen. Although it <laughs> might bolt up. And even though in times, what you're doing is bolting up. What you're doing seemingly be, is working. But if it has deviated from the exactness of God, then that means you're handling it as a reprobate. And we've we got to examine this. You know, we, we can't let our lives go on, our feelings go on, uh, and walk in areas. When someone's taught us something, we say, well, I don't, well, I don't know about that. I don't believe that. Uh, if that's what he wants us to go that way, I'll go this way. Well, you know, that, that is the very thing that's got to be on down. That, that's what we've got to come to. Now, let, listen, and Paul went on and said, said this. He said that, but that ye should do that which is honest, though it would be as reprobates. And what he was meaning in that, your life, and in a lot of the world's aspect, there are a lot of the teachings of the, of the exact word of God. You, they, the preachers is looked at as, as what's deviated. They're looked at as what is not right. You know, you get up and talk about a lot of lifestyles in this day and time, a lot of things that people do, and, and all, you know, they, they think that you deviate a little bit. I, I'm going to read you one here. I've got it wrote down. It won't take me this minute, maybe, to flip back here. And remember, now we're in year 1611. Let's don't forget where we're at. I like, I like reading from there. That makes it a simple thing. Because I don't remember that key's out, you know. Yeah. Our ball games and, and all that stuff that we've turned into the doctrine of Christ. I'm going to go to the 15th chapter of Isaiah. And I'm going to read you a little something here. If I can find it right Just bear it with me. This will say the ABC factors while I'm looking for this. <laughs> 58th chapter of Isaiah. I just want to read you something. I, I don't, I, I don't want you to think that I'm trying to uh, find a topic and just wear it out. But it's just one that is so obviously easy to see. Now, examine yourself. You know, this is 1611. This ain't 2000. This ain't 2011. We have become people that reprobate concerning the truth. Deviating from what's more than right or proper or good, we have created a direction that we all accept to be acceptable. But what is it according to the Word of God? Now, I'm going to read you something here out of this 15th chapter of Isaiah, 13 and the 14th verse. And just exactly yourself. You know, I'm not pointing a finger at nobody. And I don't want you to feel that. If thou turn away thy foot, from the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord honorable, and shall honor him, not doing thy own ways, nor finding thy own pleasure, nor seeking thy own words. Then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth, and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. Now, those that didn't catch it, I'll read it again. I've done a full job reading it. It said, if. Now, when you mm -hmm. go to the New Testament, I think I understand it to be in our 530 sometimes. So two letter big words. That means the circumstances of what you are going to hear are determined by what you do. Now, 
if you deviate from this, and if you know this is morally right, I believe this being a year 16 and 11, and we're reading for the first time the New Test or the Old Testament Hebrew translation, and here we're, we're hearing these words some of us for the first time. I believe it's exciting our soul to know that this is something that we've heard maybe for the first time in our life, the genuine word of God. Here we're hearing this. Examine yourself. If thou turn away thy foot from the, the Sabbath, from doing thy pleasure on my holy day. There you, you know, go. What, mm-hmm. Reprobate to say, boys, where are we at? <laughs> That's right. Just think of this. From doing thy pleasure on my holy day, and call the Sabbath of the light, the holy of the Lord, honorable, and shall honor him. What it's saying, honor him by not doing thy own way, you see. If you're just set apart doing your own ways, don't care with what the Sabbath day holds, what it means. You're caught in your foot to your pleasure. Just doing and going and doing and going. <coughs> would it be fair that I would say as much that you deviated mm-hmm. or maybe allowed yourself to become <coughs> reprobate mm-hmm. concerning what's more right, proper, or good? Would that, be, would that be fitting to say that? Amen. Amen. But, yep. I mean, just think of what this Word of God is saying. Right. And, and if we want to know that God's in our heart, we want to hold him close to us in all that he is. We're going to have to return to something, folks, that we've let go. Yeah. Something that we've just slipped through our country. Something yeah. that through time that we've just allowed, however it is, brother got to do it, sister got to do it, sister so-and-so, brother so-and-so, the preacher night, little by little by little, year after year, slowly, 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 deviating, deviating, uh, one day or not, you know, this and that. Now we've come to a place where is it, is it an honor? You know, delight in the holy of the Lord, honor, honorable shall honor him, not doing our own ways, nor finding our own pleasure, nor, nor speaking our own words. You know, speaking your own words, that's just justifying yourself about it. Now, now so of course, here Paul now, he, he was talking about this being a reprobate, and he told him, he wants you to do this. Examine yourself, become a child of God, on your own accord, seek it out. Let it be a life from you to God. There's nothing no stronger than a person that puts on Christ. You know, you can put all, all types of worldliness in it. That's why people don't have no power to God. They, they just put off a lot of things somebody's told them to get rid of. And you have a life you're going to walk around and, and, and maybe rightly in what they're doing, God's accepting that as being a right doing, but you're not doing it for a life to God. Now, I'm going to go with this along, and John talked just a little bit about this. And I want to tie this up and show you how that uh, in, in Revelations, now, it talk, it's talking two parts here, the things, uh, the things which shall be hereafter. Now, there's going to be an Antichrist in the very end that sets rule and, and has, a, has a dominion in his own throne, you know, rules this earth. And uh, you know, you're going to say, well, how can that happen? Well, you know, it, it, it's going to be very easy to have people in this day and time that won't honor what the Word of God even says, you know, slowly going into an Antichrist system. It's going to be easy to deceive people that, yeah. that just don't, don't observe God now. But in the, in Thessalonians, uh, let's see, this is Second Thessalonians, I guess, the second chapter. I'm going to read you a little something here. Concerning still, this is still 16 and 11. I'm not preaching there every, every night. I get up from now on, and uh, and uh, uh, just just for us to understand the simplicity of the Word of God, what's been added to the thing, how it's been corrupted, everything that's been put in cut that we try to uh, bow around and bend and live to, and in and, and all that after that's said and done. You know, here here we are, for the most part, of sitting down. And the world around us is going lost. Uh, neighbors are going lost. Countries going lost. Uh, not a, not a heart for a, for a people like it needs to be. Someone uh, needs you needs you, you know. And and little by little, see a deviation when the devil began to cause people to err. He didn't come in overnight. Or from last night to tonight. And cause you now to just rise up and be totally off track on something, little by little by little. Yeah. How many of you in your life today, from your first initial walk with God and your first prayer, and seeking His holiness and wanting all that He was, the carefulness that you walked by, 
have erred and let something slip in your life that you observe, do now, or partake in, that you didn't partake in maybe 8, 10, 15 years ago, 20, 30, however it might have been. What, what, uh, what, has, what has really crept in on us? Now, mm -hmm. this, this second chapter of 2 Thessalonians, and I, I don't want to take nothing away from what John's going to be teaching us here. It'll be real when he teaches it, but uh, this is a little something that he touched on. And I want, I want you to realize that the beast, you know, a lot of times people think that some brother man is going to come sit on the throne and rule this word, world with a, a rod sticking out here. The beast is that fellow that lives in you that you don't have victory over concerning mm -hmm. everything that pertains to the word of God. It, it, it is that fleshly man that has the dominion. Whenever you say don't, he goes ahead and tells a joke. When he said, when the Lord says don't fornicate, then you go ahead and make a date anyway. See that 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 just stuff don't work. Amen. Uh, yep. that, that's that's never going to work, you know. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our getting together to Him, that you be mm -hmm. not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled neither by spirit nor word nor by letters, as from us that the day of Christ is at hand. Now, when this you know Paul wrote this and his the first writing of it in the letters that he wrote to Thessalonica, I don't know how many years after Christ and they've done history on it. Couldn't have been long. But, you know, here it is, a man of God teaching these people right here, uh, 1800, 1900 years ago. He's telling them, he said, now don't you be shaken in, in mind. Don't be troubled now by a spirit, a word, or letters from us because the day of Christ is at hand. What you hear, don't let it upset you. Don't, don't let it cause you to think that you can't become everything in Christ. Don't, don't think examining yourself causes you to be found out. You know, I, I, there's, there's a verse, you know, don't you know you're the temple of God and hold those wells in you? You know, that, that's a positive thing. I think that's third chapter, first Corinthians, 16th verse mm -hmm. maybe, down in there somewhere. And of course, it goes on and says, if any man defile this temple of God, God is going to destroy that. But that, that's just the other side of the coin. But we as people, examining ourselves, wanting to walk in the Lord, we don't need to be troubled. Whenever the Lord pricks your heart and comes into your life and lets you see something a little closer, bumps you just a little bit, moves you, uncovers you, don't let that trouble you. Just raise up and say, Lord, I thank you that you're dealing with me, that you're letting me see that concerning this truth I'm reprobate. That the only worst thing to me in a reprobate is being one not admitting it. Yeah. That's the only Amen. thing worse. You know? yeah. Deviating from something and not realizing and not accepting that you've done it. So Paul, right here, several hundred years ago, he, he said Christ is at hand. So he, these people, when they when they's listening to this, this man of God made his expression so real to them people. And, and what he was teaching them, they had their eyes fixed upon him. And they looked and they went home. They talked to the husband the wife. They said, get the children ready. We've got to pray. We've got to get this Christ he's talking about because if Jesus is at hand. You know, what's it going to be? There may never be another... Another celebration of anything. You know, and here we are, we walk through life for the most, most part, you know, go to service. The Lord stir you real good, give you something to move to. And by the time you go home and eat your bologna sandwich and drink your buttermilk and go to bed, you get up in the morning, there's not a second thought of even yeah. what was preached. Amen. So we, we've got to become somebody that hungers and thirsts. Got to return to something. Yeah. We, uh, what has been deviated from, what what we have allowed to be represented, you know, and, and and we can't just learn it because Paul said to learn it. We've got to learn it because it's a life to us. And let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except to come a fallen away first, and that that man of sin be revealed as son of perdition. Well, he's been revealed all through time. Any, any, anybody that you've ever been around that went to church, that might have been in the amen corner with you, in the pulpit, they might have been preaching, they might have uh, been doing what they was doing. But then one day you got the news that something bad had happened. They, they'd been found doing something we know was ungodly, uh, stepped out and you know, all this and that. Well, all you were seeing was a product of what started about two years ago, mm -hmm. what started about three years ago. That didn't happen overnight. Right. So we, yeah. got, we got to know that all through time, the man of sin has been revealed. He's always revealed. Uh, in Revelation, the things which are. So whenever this was in this particular hour, this was revealed, that man of perdition. He was the beast that still was alive, never was killed out, never was totally, totally gone. 
a little root of bitterness stayed, a little fornicating spirit, some type of lust. Mm -hmm. Something stayed present in that person, even even though you know if there, there can be a little deviation, you know the reprobate. We can still speak in tongues, still go to church, still march on, but down through your life, something morally that was not right begin to take you off track. Something that wasn't proper, some type of an idea about things, and you begin to walk in a spirit of error. So that this man, the falling away, and there's always been a falling away. In every generation upon earth that Christ, at, at, in Paul's time, there was, in the year 1200 there was, in the year 1300, 1600, right on up to this time, all through the walk of life, any time there's been a church, any time that there's been a presentation of Christ, there's been some that accepted that, some walked with it, and done what they needed to, but some through that there was a falling away. So in that man of sin, every time he steps out, he does wrong, and he, he does these, the, the, to just bring some reproach upon what his holiness, he has been uh, uh, revealed. Now here is why he's revealed. John, let's get with me on this now. Uh, he, I think John's with me. I, I know he is. Yeah. And, and, and when he gets in on this, it's, it's, just, it's not going to be that he said nothing that he's learned off of me and him has, has not talked about this. But he, he touched on this. And, and what we got to realize, <coughs> there's going to be a hereafter. Uh, of this verse. But when Paul wrote this scripture right here, and in this day and hour, it is also revealed. It says, Who opposes and exalts himself all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he as God, setting in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. When man becomes a God to himself, when he becomes such a reprobate, he forgot to examine himself. When he wouldn't listen to the teachings, whenever he began to know what the Bible said, and he let that be, he let that go. And then that this beast that's within, you know, if you don't keep the man killed out, he'll cause you to make decisions that is not according to what God wants to make. He'll cause you to err. He'll cause you to do things that in your mind is just acceptable. And what that is, in this present hour when this was wrote, to the church of Thessalonica, he told, he told these people, now there is a man, there's something that's going to work in you, if you don't keep him killed out, that who upholds and exalts himself above all that is called God. That self, you know, of course there's going to be an Antichrist take a throne. I'm not saying that. The me and you's not battling with a booger man out here, some big uh, man running around with a pitchfork. The only person in my life that has ever given me any form, fashion, any type of misleading that could ever come or a temptation, it come through self. Yeah. It was this Amen. man right here. It was yeah. nothing that you've done. I hope those people can say things that make you stronger. You know, we think we're going to die. Somebody calls us false or calls us, says, I disagree. Well, that, that's, that's fine and well. All that's doing is making me stronger yeah. Yeah. because I'm not going to argue Amen. with you about it. That's right. yeah, but you, you must understand that this God, of self. He opposes himself against everything. There's some folks you can hardly touch. There's topics I could get on tonight that I know there's division on in people's hearts, in their minds, that I could take this word of God and show you things that you obviously don't know and prove my point to be right, but then what would that it's just not time for such as that. But there's people that will not change their philosophy, won't turn their mind toward the word of God, toward what it's fully saying. And understand it because if we're not careful, just a little reprobate mind in us, and, and we oppose it and exalt ourselves, all that's called God, every message that ever went, all that is worshiped, so that He is God, saith in the temple of God, showing Himself that He is God. That self, folks, can get in us in such a form, in such a fashion, in such a, in such a manner that you can't even correct it. He can almost, and, it, and, and, and right on up here, it's going to tell you what happens to him. And remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things, and now you know what we hope that he might be revealed in his time. time. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already work. Now, how does that work? You know, how in the world can you be called of God, come and repent of your sins, and be washed clean by the blood of Jesus Christ, rise up Amen. and be around creatures, and them telling you how to live, how to work? But yet, he said, examine yourself to know that if he's in the faith. And we can become reprobates. You know, that, that can happen. And, and if we're not careful, folks, it'll, it'll get a hold of you. 
down through time, little by little, just in a process, it'll work on you and it'll cause you to become one who poses and exalts yourself above everything, every, and nobody's right but you, nobody can show you anything. You've done figured it all out. If you've got such a spirit about you, yeah. you're fulfilling this fourth verse in this second chapter of Second Thessalonians. There's a self in you that needs to be reckoned with. Yep. And the, the inability to see that. See, the mystery of iniquity works. How does that work? Daniel said, in the end, what God comes to accomplish to scatter the power of the holy people. How in the world can you be holy and our power be scattered? You know, that, that all, that's unheard of, but it's going to happen. They're going to, you know, it's all demonstrated in the virgins, you know, the foolish, the wise. Uh, all was in the, in, in the sanctuary of God, all occupied a, a work and a calling and this and that. All, all was the Lord after what was Christ. But when the midnight, or when the cry was made, the trendy lamps, when the hour come, that the Lord began to deal with everything that was reprobate, everything that had misled, everything that had deviated, he began to show folks that there's a, something in you that needs to be reckoned with. They didn't handle that. They just went on their way. They didn't deal with what they were. That mystery of iniquity kept working, kept working. And it, and it happened so much. Doth already work on he who now lives will let until he be taken out of the way. That means the devil's going up until he's gone. Now this next scripture, uh, down here I'll show you something. And then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. And we've got to stop there. And, and what that's talking about, that's been through time, as the word has always been preached, as it's always been revealed, as it is revealed, the, the wicked cannot stand, that which is of spirit of error, that which is not of God, cannot stand whenever the spirit of God's mouth begins to talk and begins to show where it's at, begins to uncover it, begins to reveal that beast, begins to show what that reprobate is, begins to totally discern it the crowd and the folks for what they are, that cannot hide. You know, you're uncovered if you want to be or not. Uh, the, the, the Lord just does that. It, it's nothing in the man that does that. It's the power of the Word of God. And the and is a conjunction which jumped in to the Lord at His return. So this verse showed time until uh, time would be no more. And then it showed it whenever the Lord would return. He said, It shall destroy with the brightness of His coming. So whenever this, when the Lord comes, folks, it's going to be over with. But in this day and hour, this exaltation of, of man, his self-will to be as what he thinks is above everything, and has made an abomination. And even him, whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. So there's nothing no more deceiving than somebody that can hoop, holler, jump, dance, speak in tongues, and as hateful as a rattlesnake. Amen. That's what you think about it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, yeah. and how, you know, don't never fall for something just because it speaks in tongues. Yeah. Well, don't Amen. don't Amen. never Amen. fall for something just because it says I'm baptized in the Holy Ghost. That's right. Yeah. You know, the devil don't care at all to say that. The devil don't care one bit to speak in tongues. You know, he don't care one bit to shout, jump, jump, hoop, holler, yeah. come on a demonstration. To make you think that he's the almighty power of God. Of the divine and I nation. thought, you know, we've got to understand either we are, yeah. either we're a reprobate or we're not. That's you know? right. Yeah. And uh, how, do you, how do you do when someone reads something and, and you just, oh, you just fall apart, you know. You just can't stand it, you know. And, and we ought not to be like this. You know? Amen. I, I'm kind of better. I tell them like this, you know, Ben Rose, I've got pretty tough nerves. You know, I'm pretty, pretty nervy kind of man. I can reach around these creek banks, get it weighed in about good muddy bottles about that deep, reach under these root wads and catch turtles, pull them out of there, this and that. That's a pretty good nerve. Grab a snake here and let it around. Wasn't in the spirit when I done it, you know. I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. And all like that. But just because a man's got nerve enough yeah. to come get your pulpit and say that he knows God don't mean he knows only God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And you can't know, right. know God if you don't know only God. Only God. If there's anything in this life you don't that turns you aside, some pretty woman gets your attention, That's right. uh, some old flame, this and that, and whatever, you're wrong in your mind, yeah. after every old thing that comes and goes, Amen. Uh, and, and your time is more spent in some hobby, some pleasure, yeah. than it is in a prayer life or a Amen. prayer room. Honey, if you're not careful, Brother Clinton says it, and I'll just repeat it because I believe it to be true. Any man that's got his eye on the pleasure of this life 
more than he does on an altar, God's got his eye on somebody else's wife. Mm-hmm. Amen. And that's no. just the fact. Yeah. We just as well know that because you, you, can, you can just find out what people are. We can organize a singing so-and-so groups want to be here. We're going to have a hoopy do time. You can sell tickets and fill the house. You know, they're going to yeah. just call me in by the droves. But you tell people, come out here now, so-and-so night. We're going to be on our knees when you enter the building, find you a place. We're going to spend all night in prayer. Why, the ones that would raise up, I tell you what, there would be very few of you here yeah. come morning time. Yeah. And we, you know, we're not careful. We are an expression of what we do. You're not what yeah. you believe. A lot of people's mistaken that they think because they believe something, that's what they are. No. But we're examining ourselves. Yes, right. Have we deviated from <coughs> what is morally right, proper, or good? And the mystery of iniquity. Now, his coming, uh, we've done read that, and with all deceitfulness of unrighteousness, and them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. Now, everybody, you know, we've all received the love of the truth. You know, there's nobody ever that's ever rise up and say, I'm saved, don't care what you say, you know, I've got the love of the truth. This and that, and what we need to realize, that when you're saved, you're saved as a baby in Christ. Amen. Yep. You're a baby, meant yes. to grow, yes. meant to become something. And, and the worst mistake you can ever make yes. in your life is hold to a baby experience and not become the image of God. Amen. See, yep. Amen. That, that, that word, that uh, phrase, predestination, that's it. You know, I, I tell you, you know, in this form or fashion, that's been misrepresented. Yep. If, we, if you believe it in the manner that I'm going to describe, it's because somebody taught you wrong. Predestination doesn't mean when you're saved, you're eternally saved, you're going to heaven and this will float in the glory one day. Predestination means when you was born again, you're predestined to be conformed to the image yep. of Christ. Amen. That's what that means. Yep. The older I get, I told this the other night, my dear grandmother, I walked in, she's 93 years old, her mind's probably sharper than mine. And I walked in there across that room, and she said, David, you get to look more like Randy every day. And that was my dad. Of course, I'm about his age when he dies, you know, so I, I'm probably a pretty good spitting image of him. And the older you get, and the closer you get uh, to Christ, the more you're going to look at. You know, the baby picture of Jesus can look one bit like him whenever he was hanging on the cross. Yeah. You know, in my baby picture and my steps in walking with God is nothing at all like what I represent Christ tonight. So the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And, and, and listen, the most the worrisome thing that I wonder sometimes, I never want to put it in place because I don't want to think that this has happened, but, you know, obviously it has in some form or fashion to some people. When you become a person that can't get along, you won't listen, nobody can help you, you know, uh, and every time you hear something that's different and you believe, you just put your stake down, and you pound, and you won't give an inch, and you think that I'm right, and nobody else knows what I know, I know how I got here, you know, that's that's dangerous ground to defend yourself in that type of manner. Amen. Because, you know, that in itself is evidence of rebellion, you know, and and uh, I never have been a person since I realized there's more for me to learn to just want to uh, act ignorant, you know, about something. Somebody moved me a little bit. And, and what's, what has really taught me to realize that there's a life beyond where I ever lived is because, did you know that there's people in our lifetime that through a vision of God, and what you will say, will excuse yourself. Well, maybe we deviate from what was more than right or probably good. Maybe we was just a little reprobate. I, I know a man recently passed away a couple of years ago in his lifetime. I think he lived to be in his mid 80s. He was saved was about 27 years old. And when he turned 70, the Lord gave him a vision that through that vision he put the gospel in 120 countries of this world. And while that was going on, I was in some churches. They'd walk around and say, You saved? No, you ain't saved. I've got this, no, you ain't got that. <laughs> All your toes are showing through your shoes. So and so's in with a neck necktie. Who's was that devil with the mustache sitting back there? <laughs> That's the foolishness I was listening at <laughs> while Brother Clendenny was out here evangelizing the world. Yeah. So if we're not careful who's been reprobated. <laughs> who's deviated <laughs> from what was morally right, Amen. what was proper, what Amen. was good. That's and right. for this God Praise cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Now, who's believing a lie? You know, you think it can't be you. You, you think it can't be you. You know, we, we just won't accept 
that there could be a little something in our mind, in our understanding, of what we have supposed to be the glorious Word of God. We will not examine ourselves and bring ourselves humble enough before God to even ask of Him to show us, hey, am I, have I done something in the spirit of error? Have I, have I held something that's not your will? And, and like I said, there's a topic tonight. And like I said, obviously people don't understand the word. If they did, they would accept it. We'd all accept it. Uh, the Lord didn't save you to walk on one side of the road and save me to walk on the other side. It's a straight gate and a narrow way. Yeah. One way right there it is, and it just isn't all it means. It don't mean we're enemies. We don't fight. We don't fall out. That, that's where people's made the mistake all through the years. You know, they come a little top of up, they can't get along with. Well, they they grab their pictures off the wall, the two seats they bought, and they go down the road, go to the store, up, yeah. start their church. Yeah. You know? Amen. That's how that goes. They yeah. call that the love of God. Yeah. But somehow, some, if we're not careful, that, that there's someone, God might have sent a delusion somewhere. Yeah. You know, and I, you know, the scariest, one of the scariest things I've ever remember learning. And uh, and it wasn't no one taught me except in my little feeble mind myself. And the Lord, you know, in that 14th chapter of Ezekiel, where it talks about how that the Lord's going to deceive the prophet and take prophets out of you according to the hour of your heart and, and all like that. If that ain't the Lord sending you a strong delusion, I, I don't know what else it yeah. could be. Yeah. And you, if you've ever read something in your life that'll change you, go to the 14th chapter of Ezekiel, read that. It's about where the certain elders come and stood before Ezekiel. And I, I picture it as they come up to be prayed for, you know, and he was standing there right. watching them, maybe all four of them, and all of a sudden the Lord started talking in his ear. He said, should I be inquired at all of these? If we've got these idols in the heart. Ezekiel the got kind of hooked <laughs> up there, you know, he started listening. Mm -hmm. And he told them, he said, well, here they come. They want to know that they should do some worldly thing. Tell them. They, they've oh, made man. an idol in their heart. They're trying to get me to do something that I'm not life and death over. But I see them determined now that they're wanting to answer. Answer them according to the in your heart. That's what God said to do. Yeah. And uh, went on and read down through there. And the Lord said, I, thy God, have received the prophet. So I, I want you know, don't think that this that God of heaven won't send you a strong delusion. Yeah. Uh, Amen. The Bible says that he'll do that. And, and how, how can you examine yourself? Have you deviated from what's moral? Have you operated in the spirit of error? Have you seen and told things to be an example of God's way that's really not his way? Yeah. And we as people of God, before we can be effective for all that God's died for, we have to love all that he's loved. We have yeah. to love it like he loves it. And I told us here the other night, if I don't love a man with a sling, if I think that makes him ungodly, we're a slave. I cannot love him like I need to look. Yeah. If, you, if you count him out, you know, poor little Peter, he had that problem. Uh, you know, here he was, preached the first message of Pentecost. Mm -hmm. He's seen him bow in 3,000, 5,000. He knows what it was to raise somebody up a cripple. He'd seen, you might, if anybody could have gloried in anything that God had done through him, he could have used what he had been, what God had done through him, and said, oh God, I know what I am. But God had to deal with him because he didn't love what, what God was doing. Yeah, that would be the, the yeah, spirit yeah. of error. That would be the reprobate that comes up on you. That would be the deviation that takes place in your mind. Yes. But that they shall be damned who believe not the truth and have pleasure in unrighteousness. Now we, we call unrighteousness as me, me wearing my boxer shorts on a beach somewhere with a tank top and you with your underwear running around. That is unrighteousness. But what this is talking about is unrightful doings. What is not morally right? What, what, what is not proper? You know, anything that is out of the character of Christ is unrighteousness. And if you have pleasure in backbiting, if you have pleasure in throwing stones across the, the building to somebody, if you think God's anointed you to rebuke somebody in the house that's wrote a beard, you are a servant of unrighteousness. Amen. Yeah, amen. Yeah. Amen. Oh, listen to that. Amen. Yeah. Isn't that uh, we we become who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Yeah. Amen. amen. Or that is worship. Yeah. So that he is God set up in the temple of God, this temple right here, showing himself that he is God. 
won't listen to nothing that they're told. Won't pay no attention to nothing. Won't listen to nothing. Won't let God pull them out of the fire. Won't show them anything. Remember, this is 1611. This is when every man in here had a beard that long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Amen. Yeah, this is the A.B. 7. Yeah, the Lord. Bless yeah. his little hearts. And I wish he'd come stand before us. And uh, oh, he would be in here sick tonight. You'd be <laughs> healed before you left. That's right. If you have enough pride yes. that the man with that big basket beard pray for you, you know, yep. if you could get rid of that. Now, if you, you think this ain't you, folks, this is a lot of it. That's and, it. And I just put my finger it's on some of this. You say, oh, you're the judge? No, this is the discerner. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Amen. I, 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 you know, this thing gets very, very particular. It can go a lot further in our hearts oh, than we want it to go. You know, we, we want that spirit Christ. to prophesy to us when we've got an idol in our hearts. You know, yeah. when we've got what oh, we God. perceive to be the answer. You know, it's either going to be a red car or a blue truck. And we think that we've got that figured out. Yeah, There's some prophecy yeah. going to us. Buy whichever one you want. You know, yeah. I'm not against all that. Yeah. But if we're not careful, most of what gets prayed for could be that we've been given nothing but over just, just some type of delusion. How can you have pleasure in unrighteousness? Yeah. How can you feel that God's anointed you to rise up and say something that the Word of God does not even support? Yeah. Amen. If that's not reprobate, if that's yeah. not deviation, yeah. and, and, and what we must realize, we have been on this journey up until the year 2011. Yeah. All a few times. And I can say this, you have to say it too. We we call it the old path. We call it, I believe, an old time holiness. Most of what I hear preach, folks, I never heard it until I got around a certain bunch of folks, and it's not in the book I read. Amen. There you so, go. you know, what Amen. are we really yeah. leading ourselves to? What are we really giving <laughs> ourselves to? The Lord wants <laughs> us to love and love. God, and it's common so sense character. But we are bound to give oh, thanks man. always yeah. to God for you, rather than love the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the Spirit and believing in the truth. They don't do you believe a wise fable? Believe you got the Holy Ghost by giving up a Pepsi and you're believing a lie. Amen. That Pepsi has nothing to do with it. Yep. It has absolutely nothing. Period. There's no way. The atonement for your sin is the blood of Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, 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 it's, it's not uh, I, I, your imagination, I, mine couldn't go wrong enough and far enough to tell everything that people put it into. But it's through the Spirit, through sanctification of this Spirit, of the heart, of man, to be what God said for him to be. And to the belief of the truth, that you, and truth and faith, you know, that their brothers understand. You know, uh, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word. When you hear the word, what do you get? You get understanding, don't you? So if you actually understand something, then it can uh, transform uh, into into a faith for you. But you know, just because you believe something, you don't understand that it can work through you. It's just a vain thing. So so we got to realize that all that that's the same. Where unto he calls you to our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold the traditions which you have been taught. And I wonder what they was back there in the, in the year that Paul wrote this. You know, I don't know. I'd love to hear what they was. You know, I, I'd say it's probably not a lot of stuff we've mixed together <laughs> down through the time. But listen to this. Which you have been taught, neither by word nor, nor by pistol, nor our Lord, now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God even our Father which have loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. And I hope I didn't upset you too bad. You upset that just the, the, there's a beast in you you've got to get a hold of. Yeah. 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 And, uh, we ought to everyone, and not that I'm seeking praise of man, that's not what this is about. But if you can't glorify God and know you've heard the truth tonight, You've got some moving up. Yeah. yeah. Amen. So what we're going to do, we're going to have an altar here tonight. Amen. Anybody that felt like that you were stubborn in that, anything in that that you disagreed with, that you felt like that, that was just an error, Brother Miller, we're going to all pray. That'd be a good one. All right. All right. Let's gather around here and give us a good altar call. And like I said, if you disagreed with that, you can walk on this altar. Amen. So let's all yep. gather around here. Yeah. I'm on my little floor. Troubles come and I can't find an answer. Call me by the name. 
It's me. Uh -huh. 